Mr. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen. Hands up which play won the London Evening Standard Award for the best play of the year. Any takers? I'll tell you. You know it, you know it, yes. What is it? You know it? Pippin Painters. Great. <laughs> you know, we've got an answer here. The Pittman Painters. And did you see it recently in London or? Bath. In Bath, uh-huh. Well, that was really good. So the Pittman Painters is a play really about satisfaction and contentment and extending the world of men who never thought they had it in them. The Ashington Group, which actually started in 1934 up in Northumberland near Newcastle, was an art group which actually evolved from the local miner, mining community and the actual pit was called the Ashington Colliery. And a lot of these men were made redundant in 1934 and were actually saved by an organization called the WEA. The WEA, which stands for the Workers' Educational Association, did a lot in mining communities particularly, or areas of high unemployment, because they were able to get out and mix with people who wanted their horizons extended. <coughs> at no cost. The only thing they needed, each person who joined, was an inquiring mind. A mind which wanted to search outside their own comfort zone. And they were terribly, terribly lucky because the person sent to them was a genius of a teacher. He came from the WDA and was able to ask them what they think it all involved. He said, all I want from you is that you come on a Tuesday evening, come to the local YMCA, and we'll give it a go. Give it a go, each one of you, and we'll see where it gets us. And this man, this lecturer, came every Tuesday for 16 weeks and was able to explain the basics of art, perspective and pace and color and texture and line and being able to be yourself. So Tuesday night, they all looked forward to this, and they started out with 30 people on the register. They ended up with less than 10. But those 10 were the core men who were able to produce. And the lecturer said to them, I am not going to just let you paint or draw <coughs> just for ourselves, but I am going to take you to London. And to London, your show will go. So these men, who a year previously had never picked up a pencil or a paintbrush, were able to go to London to meet people in the Tate Gallery, to meet people who were friends of the gallery of the Tate Gallery, and to share with them their experience of what it's like to talk about Van Gogh, Caravaggio, all the famous painters of the day. And so they were able to stand their own and actually be counted for the work that was on display. And one of the things that was really pleased them, the WEA was, had a rule that you were not allowed to sell anything because it was really for education and money was rather a dirty word. So if they actually could get around this, they could sell their paintings, so they did. And very often you saw the little checks coming in, one pound, three shillings and sixpence. What would those be worth today? But the money that they got all went into their kitty and they weren't selling them for gain because they were selling them to buy more paints. Up until this time, they were using marine paint, any sort of paint that they could get their hands on, brushes and everything, and they actually used to paint on orange boxes. So what they said, that we're going to get going and really see what we can do. And when the man actually uh, up in uh, Ashington wanted to put a big play on, he said to them, 
he said to the chap in the, in the, the, the museum, what can we do to get people here? We're going to put on something that will bring all the people. And so they started by putting on a play which was written about them by a man called William Fever, and that was in 2006. And this play, as, as I say, has been taken to America as great acclaim. And because of their experiences, they were all able to share in this enthusiasm. So many times, ladies and gentlemen, we're afraid to have a go ourselves. We're afraid we won't measure up. And it's only sometimes by that extra push that this can happen. These men were able, according to the lecturer, to paint with passion. Paint your ferrets, <laughs> paint your dogs, paint your pigeons, paint something you know. Don't go out and try to do landscapes, paint something you know. And then it will come not only from your head, but your heart. And painting is all about putting your heart into it. The great painters of the day were able, after they'd used and used and practiced and put loads and loads of old paper to the side, through practice they were able to come to a conclusion that satisfied them inside. And, but it wasn't easy. And these painters themselves after a life of unemployment, were able to have a very much more satisfactory life in their later years. And they didn't know, as I say, that their families would be painted as well, because they painted the industrial landscape around them. And it's so, so easy in this day and age, with a lot of unemployment around now, to be able to see that as an example of what we can all do sometimes when we actually put ourselves in a position to get out of our comfort zone and give it a go.